Good morning. It is Thursday, December 17th, 2020, and I am Pastor Mark Dilley of West Valley Grace Fellowship. If you happen to be following these messages week by week, I apologize for no message last week. I wasn't feeling well. I went and got tested for COVID, and the outcome was negative, and so I guess that's a good thing. Again, my information is up here for uh, anyone that might have any questions or responses or anything that you would like to um, have some clarity about. And I encourage you to contact me at either my telephone number or my email or message me through uh, my telephone number if you have any questions whatsoever or if there is a topic you might want me to address. And so let's get back to a little bit of a series of messages, The God of All Grace, Part 3. We stand in grace. Let's look at, uh, in the past, we've spoken about God's grace and salvation. Uh, the God that we worship, the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, motivated by his love, sacrificed his sinless son, who also loved us and willingly gave himself for us on the cross of Calvary to redeem us by grace alone, through faith alone. And so those uh, who have believed or will believe the gospel of salvation, it is all accomplished by the grace of God. And having believed, you are now a child of God. You've been baptized by the Spirit of God into the body of Christ. You've been sealed by God with the Holy Spirit onto the day of redemption. Again, for the natural man, for the natural mind, the solical person, this concept of pure grace is almost repulsive to them because the natural man or the solical man desires to invest, to have some investment in it so that they might have some claim rather than just simply taking God at his word that he loved us, that he gave his son for us, and it is by grace you have been saved. And so, let's look at Romans 5, 1. Romans chapter 5 and verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of of the glory of God. I, I just am awed by the depth of truth that is in those two verses, especially that part about the grace wherein we stand and we rejoice. We are filled with joy and appreciation in the anticipation of the glory of God. Because when he appears in glory, the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall also appear with him in glory. And so we stand in grace. It is by grace that we are saved through faith and that not of ourselves. It is the gift of God. And then we are forgiven our sins by grace. In Ephesians 1, 7, it says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. And then we have been justified freely, without any cause in ourselves. Romans 3, 24. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Now, it may be redundant that I talk about these things, but that is no problem for me. It is 
a privilege to know these truths and to share them with others. And so God's grace and salvation is an established fact and for all of those that have believed the gospel of salvation, that is a closed transaction, a closed event. You are saved, sealed, and secured onto the day of redemption. And so whatever ensues in our life, nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. And so, to the praise of his glorious grace, we have been crucified, buried, and raised up to walk in newness of life. This is uh, the opening move of God in the experience of every believer, every member of the church, which is his body, now solely by grace and the power of God, we are to work out our salvation in Christ and so that aspect of it our salvation is secure and settled in the eternal state of God now our sanctification our living while we wait for that glorious hope that glorious appearing of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to take us to be with him and so let's look at Philippians chapter 2 and verse 12. I've mentioned this several times. Grace is not license to sin, or grace is not grounds to make light of sin. Sin, particularly Adam's sin, but all sin, is a terrible affront to a holy and righteous God. And so Philippians chapter 2 and verse 12. <clears throat> Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Do all things without murmurings and disputings, that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world, holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. And so Paul makes it very clear that we don't work for our salvation. That was by grace. Now we are to work out that salvation with fear and trembling. And those words are serious words. This is a serious lifestyle that we are to embrace. Because those who live righteously in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And so our gracious God, our awesome God, we desire to serve him with fear and trembling. Not of punishment, but just of the fear or the awesomeness of having this privilege and having this intense desire to be used by him in grace. Let's look at Colossians 3. Colossians 3 verses 1 through 4. If ye then be risen with Christ, and that if is not a conditional if, it could be translated, since ye have been risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is seated on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above and not on the things of the earth. For ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ who is our life shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. And so since we have this salvation, 
that is hid in Christ, we can rejoice. We can be totally confident that God will complete that which he has begun in us. And now we are to work out our salvation with fear and trembling, setting our affections on things above and not on the things of this earth. And that's where the real struggle comes. It is the struggle between our spiritual life and our earthly connection. And this physical body that we live in is sinful. It desires sin. And as a result, we have this continuous struggle between the Spirit of God working in us to will and to do of His good pleasure and our flesh, which desires totally self satisfaction now it may sacrifice itself but it is motivated because it is satisfying to the person that is doing it and so many people make great sacrifices for themselves and for those around them but we are to reckon ourselves dead to sin and alive to God through Jesus Christ and as a result, our lives are to be living testimonies of Christ living through us. And so let's just look at a couple of verses for today. Ephesians 2.10. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained, that we should walk in them. So having been saved by the grace of God, he has a plan for your life. And in that life, he has ordained specific works for you, which he will reward you for at the bema seat of Christ. And so he's ordained these works that you should walk in them. Now, I challenge every person to say, and I know what those works are. In two weeks, he's going to have me do this or that. We don't really know what those works are. We don't have the power to actually perform those works. And so they become works of faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. And so in this marvelous gospel of the grace of God, we are to trust God completely for everything. Now that does not mean we throw out our rational mind, that we throw out rational thinking, that we don't make plans or anything like that. But we commit all of it to God in submission, simply desiring to complete His purpose in our lives. When God saved you, he saved you for his purpose and his glory. And so it is our responsibility now, having been saved, to realize he didn't save me to go out and live in the world. He saved me to glorify him. And my life from that point on was ordained to that end. And so I pray that each person hearing this message today will understand why they were saved it was nothing in them it was not we weren't saved according to the righteous things we have done but according to his mercy and so god saved us for his purpose and each one of us is now responsible rationally responsible to desire to fulfill that purpose and if that's not your heart's desire today, I pray that the Spirit of God will work in you that desire. That your entire existence would be to the glory of God. And that's what our heart's desire is. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we bow before you as our sovereign God and our Redeemer. We bow before the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, and we simply ask, Lord, we don't know what your purpose is specifically, but we willingly 
present our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto you, which is but our reasonable worship. And in that process, we trust you to do whatever must be done to glorify yourself in us. For it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen.